thank you very much for this kind introduction. Um, and yes, um, today is a very symbolic day for me because I had been working for the homing project for about three years, a little bit more. And I have met wonderful people in Manchester, London, and in many places in Ecuador and Peru. And one of these person is Lucho Sanchez, who has opened the door of his house, his family, and who has connected me with people uh, in many places to know about what is this very idea of uh, the role of communities of faith and how they are supporting people. So. I am so, so pleased and uh, thank you Lucio for joining us and I am going now to present um, my paper, which is indeed a chapter that um, with my colleague Sarah Bonfanti, we are putting together a book in the Homing Project and this is one of the nine life histories we are going to have in this special collection of life histories. So the title of my presentation is Moved by the Hand of God, uh, Exploring the Role of Communities of Faith in the Home Mobility Nexus. I expect to talk about between 30-40 minutes and then I will give the, the, the floor to Lucho Sanchez to really said what he wants to say, maybe a reflection of how we are, I mean me, portraying his life experience or any reflection is absolutely welcome. So the, the structure of my presentation, um, first of all, I am going to explain my research aims and research questions. After that, I will try to develop what is uh, the conceptual framework, the critical concepts I am engaging with to explore the uh, Lucho's uh, and his family life history. And then I will uh, spend some words in, in the methods that I believe is significant because in the Homing Project, we are doing uh, several uh, strategies to really engage with people's life experience. And then um, probably I will devote most of my time on my presentation in explaining the empirical findings. And after I will just um, open the floor for discussion and conclusion, what I have learned after investigating the life experience of Lucho for more than three years. So um, that is the point. So your questions, comments are absolutely welcome at the end of my presentation. Researching some questions, you can see then uh, there. So far, my paper is looking at the intersect between communities of faith, mobility and home, three critical concepts. And I have two interrelated questions. The first one, what and where is home for those who are moved by the hand of God? That is a very simple question. Where is home for people like Lucho Sanchez? And when do they, does he feel at home, for example? And the second question is how does mobility driven by people's faith complicate the home migration nexus? It's something new that we can add to this strand of the literature when talking about people who move because of their faith or this is just most the same thing when people move for different reasons. That is the kind of questions I have in my mind and I was reflecting for the presentation and for the chapter. So the first idea I want to share is why this is relevant. Why is important that people uh, researching from the University of Trento spend uh, several conversations with Lucho, his family in different places? What are the relevant, the conceptual relevance of this? So I am saying that faith related mobilities question the conceptual value of migration categories. We often talk about migrants, labor migrants, refugees, asylum seekers, too many categories. So to one extent, the life experience of this particular participant can learn each other something new or perhaps to expand on these ideas we already have. And the second key element is faith related mobility challenge the idea that home is an universal search, something that I believe, and uh, a never ending aspiration or a never ending search. And I am including here two quotes or maybe three, home is a fundamental need and early research by 1999 and a piece of research that I, I know uh, Paolo Bocagni uh, loves, Agnes Heller when saying home seems to be one of the few constants of the human condition. That is a really interesting thing and I was thinking perhaps it's not true for everyone or maybe yes in when different elements are present. And then the second bit is home is never fully achieved. For the year 2003, a very significant piece of research. And this is a book that is kind of compulsory reading for people looking at ideas of home. 
and belonging, uh, and all these important elements. And when I saw this idea for the first time, home is never fully achieved. I said, that is, yeah, it's really interesting to look at this idea. And now with Luchov's life experience, I say, oh, very interesting to put that together. But an ongoing aspiration. So when do you feel at home? Or uh, is, a, is a search that you have all the time? So this is the kind of significance of this piece of research. So as I already anticipate, my, my, my paper, engaged with three main concepts, communities of faith, mobilities, and home. I am going to go quickly because there are many, many elements that I want to share, but yeah, the time is perhaps not enough. So communities of faith, I am not intending to say what is and what is not communities of faith. Rather, I am just trying to say what I have learned reading about communities of faith and the elements I am using for this presentation. I found very interesting the work by Cruz with this idea of journeying together in faith. And I have to say that I found this piece after talking with Lucha for several years. So, and she said something like people on the move bring both visible and invisible baggage. And faith can be carried out on the invisible baggage. And I say, oh, Interesting. Communities of faith play a critical role in the process of migration. So it was very fundamental in the life experience of people like Lucho, but also in the process of settlement. I use settlement here in inverted commons. I didn't put that. And also loads for the mobility, opens the door to go and to embrace different cultures, different communities within one country or in another country. Christian mission and ministry in the context of contemporary migration are seeking to become a home for all. It is the same author, uh, but two years later, just exploring how Christian community have engaged in different countries of the world, trying to embrace the people in need or the so people who are suffering and trying to make a home for them. And the last bit in terms of communities of faith, church has become a cultural and a spiritual home for immigrants. I really like the idea of a spiritual home. And I found this fascinating piece of research by Womack with Arab Arabic Christians in the United States and the process of settlement and this idea of the community trying to embrace them to find a spiritual home. Well, the second key concept is mobilities, and mobilities is a, is a huge concept. I am just learning about the concept, so I am going just to share what I have learned. Mobilities as a framework for better understanding of the world. That is a, is a, is a really interesting idea. If we use uh, the framework of mobilities, perhaps we are in a better position to see what is happening around us and what is not happening. For example, a central element now in the context of the pandemic, who can move, who can move, why people move, all these elements of mobility seems a critical concept for understanding our world in many ways. The new mobility paradigms, uh, and I am um, mainly quoting here, Tim Creswell and again, Scheller and Uri, provides a conceptual lens to understand the movement of people, goods, ideas that is so significant for our homing project because we are looking how for example ideas of home travel across borders and all these elements but for this particular paper i am interested in looking at how social and cultural practices and in particular communities of faith and religious practice move from one place to another and here to the additional elements one is what um, Noel Salazar called meaningful or life-shaping events. This relates with early research by Professor Gras and Hash with significant movement. And um, I was very interested in this idea because in, in my understanding of Lucha Life's experience, you don't need to move from Peru to the UK to experience a significant movement. You can experience that moving within Lima just changing the neighborhood. I then I will then use this concept later on in my presentation. And we are that they may occur in mundane mobilities, moving within one's house, within one's building. Perhaps in this movement, we can lose something or gain something or experience a completely different something that shapes our understanding of the life or our understanding on this particular um, context of home. Well, and home, um, yeah, 
a huge content and I don't want just to just want to say what how I am conceptualizing home for this presentation. I am drawing on scholarly research on home and migration. I already mentioned Professor Gassan Hash in 1997. Ralph and Style is suggesting that home can be experienced in different places on the move. Professor Paolo Bocatni, um, our director of the project, the principal investigator with a book on home in the search and providing different elements to conceptualize home, familiarity, security, control. And Miranda uh, Massa and Bonfanti, other members of our homing project, they are not today um, in, in the presentation, but they had produced a very significant book, uh, part of the reflections that they have done in, in, in our project, reflecting on all these elements. But for these presentations, I just opted to present the thing I best know, that is a piece of research based on my PhD study, and I am suggesting that home entails mainly four dimensions. A material dimensions could be the place of dwelling, but I am aware that many people have not a place of dwelling, and the many people, Lucho Sanchez, have been working in Manchester who had not really a place to stay. They are homeless, not just in emotional, but also in physical terms. A social world that the idea of home connects with ideas of family, community, cultural identity, belonging. All these elements are a mix that are significant for understanding people's experience of home. And then this critical concept by geographer Professor Doran Massey, suggesting that what this, you know, there is an element of what she calls a sense of place. When or where, sorry, where do you feel at home? And why do you feel at home in a particular place? in your shelter, in your house, in your community, in the house of your mother, where? So that is important. And the last bit is emotional, spiritual, and existential dimensions of home that I believe have become very significant in the life experience of Lucho, as I as, uh, as, yes, um, intend to demonstrate in my presentation today. In conclusion, home is a multidimensional uh, space that is material and symbolic, and I am drawing here on Alison Bloom and Robin Dowling. Home is relational, connects multiple places, multiple relationships, and multiple scales. By multiple scales, I mean the domestic space, the neighborhood, the community, the transnational family living in two different parts of the world. And home is dynamic. And I am drawing here on early research and home, in particular with refugees. Um, this, I, I, I always call these two pieces of research because I, I, I really like their ethnographic engagement and how they develop these concepts. And this idea that home is dynamic. Homes can be, uh, this idea change over time and space. What I mean, home can be made through years, through everyday social practice, but it can be lost because um, the experience of, for example, people flying war, or maybe because you don't need to fly because of war, Maybe just some people um, have to leave the house because they lose the property. Uh, but home can be also regained. People can do something um, to to regain a sense of home. Um, and then, um, so I am putting all these elements together to what happened. I can move the the, the presentation. Uh, just one second, please. Oh yes. Now, um, time for the methods. Um, and, and then in terms of the methods, it was an easy transition in my computer here. I, I, something is happening, just be very with me for a second. Um, you, do you still see my screen, yes or no? Okay, so in terms of methods, um, um, yes, as I said at the beginning, we had doing ethnographic research with Lucho and his family and friends in different places. Um, I mean, in, in, his, uh, in his case in Manchester, and also in, with family and friends in, in different places of Peru. And we have been using different research techniques. Formal interviews, we have had, I don't know how many interviews now uh, with Lucho and his family. And I am using here the idea of personal narrative from oral history, very, very significant 
to me, ideas of early research by Professor uh, Uma Kotari and David Hume, but also by Olivia Bennett and Christopher McDowell, suggesting that uh, life histories are not tales. There are significant sources of learning something, and we can theorize on people's life histories. And I have this beautiful quote here, Neil Aori suggesting that narratives actively construct lives and identities through the art of telling, but storing a sense of events, memories, and thoughts. So the life story connects people through different moments of their lives, and people collect some pieces of their lives to make sense of their everyday life. So what people tell us when we ask questions is significant because it connects their different experience through their life course. And we are, as a researcher, has really the opportunity to understand this connection when engaging with people in longitudinal research. We are also doing in the home project what we call home visits. I rarely use the word home visit because I can take for granted that the place people are living is a home, maybe just a house, but I just put the inverted comments. So I, I, I visited um, and was welcomed uh, in, in Lucho's uh, family house. Um, and I had done something that I have found very significant to learn about Lucha's life experience, it's what I am calling here photo interview. So we spent hours and hours just uh, looking at his photos in the beautiful Whitlock Gallery or in his house and just trying to see what is that particular moment, how old was there, where were you doing, and these, these kind of elements just bringing memories of home. And, and I found this very, very significant and, and I just wanted to share with you. And then we are also engaged in the homing project that we call it mobile methodologies and mobile ethnography. You see the reference there. So in mobile methodologies, I am primarily drawing on Fishman, McGuinness and Murray. So how people connect to the places. And I have to say that I am so privileged because in the homing project, we have the opportunity to, to interview Lucho here in Manchester, but I was also able to visit his family in Peru and also visiting the place uh, he left before going to, to Europe. So these whole elements is not just visiting places, it's just visiting places that Lucho has already told me about them. And then just walking around the neighborhood, trying with friends is kind of, oh, this is the place we used to travel, uh, to walk together for going to whatever. So this is really interesting. And connecting family and friends across the transnational space. Uh, and that is, I, I, I really have to, yes, I, I didn't think about this and I have to give the credit to Maria del Pilar who had been doing the fieldwork really with me because we went together several times in, in, with, in Gulucho's family. And Maria del Pilar told me that is really interesting because at some point when I see you now in Peru, Lucho sending pictures, videos, what is happening in this particular context is really the research here creating connections between family and friends that they had been seen for years because they had been communicating every day perhaps but they had been have contact a hug uh, that was very significant for Lillian's mother in the in, press, in the um, um, interview we had conducted with Paolo back in Lima for example so just to give you a taste of the many photos I have seen. So this is the neighborhood, the family neighborhood, house and domestic space in Manchester. And this is, yes, introducing the family is Lillian, uh, who is also um, one of our key informants in our homing project. And the family just cooking Peruvian food for us the very first time we visit his house. So it's kind of uh, very uncommon in the British culture to invite people and less just to serve the home food uh, for, for the family. So I really appreciate that and I put that in the photo. So then memories of family and home back in Peru. You'll see in the photos of Lillian, shown by her mother, Yolanda, and who is in the photo with her, um, her partner in the house. Paolo remembered this house, of course, because we were doing this interview together and engaging with Yolanda family and bringing a significant present for Lillian 
And I have to confess that after two years, I had been not able to deliver the present to Lillian because she's so busy working in the national health system. And then because of the pandemic, pandemic, sorry, everything is online and there is no point of delivering um, Yolanda's present online because the, the hub was just full of instructions. So, and I have the instructions here, so I hope to deliver the present very soon, Yolanda. Uh, well, the photo interview, I have, I don't know how many photos, but I just wanted to show these three, everyday life, three, Lucho and his family after three months and um, living in London, and counting annual culture, uh, holiday for the family in Wales, and both of them embracing the British culture, as you can see in um, citizenship. Well, empirical findings. Um, I don't know how much I have. Okay, empirical findings. So Lucho and his family, a general picture. Lucho is a Peruvian religious minister who had been spreading Christian values amongst middle income communities in Manchester since 2007. This is the formal way how I introduced him in my research. Lucho's mobile life had been primarily driven by his religious convictions and the spiritual needs to, be, to share Christian values with people who profess different faiths. We can ask why with people who profess different faiths. What happened in the life of Lucho that he was just interested in understanding what happened to the other places in the world. And searching for roots to experience one's God teachings, and we are going now, remember that I said that this paper engaged with the idea of mobility. So I am now trying to show the different mobilities that Lucho has experienced in his life course to make the point of what and where is home. This photo is courtesy by Hannah Beatrice. It's Lucho in the streets of Manchester. It's quite near uh, from the church and from his house. Um, and this is what is called in Manchester the Corrie Mile, that is a, a place full of middling communities, what the Lucian vision since being a child, just going to somewhere else to meet the Muslim and to understand how is the world. Where, what is that for them? And to understand they can engage in conversations with supposed completely different faiths. Uh, moving families and houses in Lima was the first movement in Lucha life experience. And if we just look at the idea of migration and not at the idea of mobilities, we may overlook this movement because he was living with a family. Uh, the family he was thinking was his family, a wealthy family in, in Lima. He was in a private school that is a kind of, we don't have time really to explore the difference between public and private, but in America, in Latin America is significant. So who go to a private school, people who can pay for that. So Lucio stressed that in the idea that he was living in a comfortable house with a nice family and they have the family, a cleaning lady. And he just learned that the cleaning lady was uh, his mother. And his work completely changed and he made the decision to say, okay, if you are my mother, I have to live with you and explore, understand my roots. So overnight, he said, I love the people I consider family and moved to a deprived neighborhood. There was no running water in the house and just the idea of using the toilet was difficult. On top of that, I was living with the strangers. So the idea of family the idea of the space, a place you call home, really changed. And Lucho was not traveling outside Peru, Lima or outside um, Peru. He was just moving between one neighborhood and another one. But this was what Salazar may call a very significant hash, a significant movement, because he was living and changing two completely different life scales. For those of you who know, um, Lima, and who know the wealthy areas of Lima, you feel like, yes, in a resort, it's wonderful everything. And if you go to the very deprived areas, it's a completely different world. So Lucho experienced that, and he was moving from a chanty town to the house of God. So he lost 
what he considered family, the place he was comfortable, and he starts something uh, experiencing what he called suicidal thoughts. So he wanted to kill himself several times, and it was something that was always in his mind. But meeting the new family, his brother, um, was older than him. My brother had the idea that you can only understand God's suffering and spread his message when you experience suffering firsthand. That is really common on people who move uh, because of faith. That is a common experience that you encounter. You have to experience the suffering to really put in order that people choose and understand what's happening. But for him, he stressed that it was largely a choice because he was indeed um, doing his studies. He had the opportunity to go to university, but he wanted to explore how people with very, very little income lives, uh, live in that part of, of, of Lima. So, and he was really doing kind of experimenting with life. We were sleeping on the floor and had no toilet. We opened holes on the floor and covering them with pots, leaves after using them. Such a way of living was largely a choice and this choice changed the ways I see life. It changed my heart. It helped me to empathize with people in need and reinforce my passion for the church. Life in the settlement helped me to create a real connection with the people suffering, strengthened my faith and weakened my love for money. So just moving places and it's having different experiences of what is life about. And then he described this and moving between two wars. I found myself moving between two wars. Most of the, so the next movement, Lucho wanted to see more in remote areas of Peru. So not enough in living in what is so-called the shanty towns of Lima. He moved to remote areas in Lima, in, in Peru, and spent uh, initially six months um, living in, in the Andes region of, of Peru. Um, just with the communities, communities who have a different language, mainly people illiterate, uh, who have in his view no connection with the God he strongly believes. So for the people he met, God was more the elements of the nation, so he started working with these communities. I found myself moving between two worlds. Most of the parishioners I met in the church in Lima had well-constructed house, houses, good jobs and salaries, and some even spent holidays abroad. Those I met in the informal settlements and in the mountains of Peru were living in inhuman conditions. They had no water, hospitals, and the idea of holidays was just that, an idea. I had several quotes, but I preferred this one because it really connects how people was, uh, Lucho in this particular instance, was moving between two worlds at some point at different moments because he was attending the church, just looking, for example, how people in the church lived, and then moving back to the shanty towns or when working with remote communities in, in the Andes region. Well, searching for a potential home in Britain uh, is the next step. So, and I found the idea of how Lucho got his pizza just fascinating because he described this as a miracle. And I truly believe that was a miracle. I was in shock. Uh, so his visa was rejected because Lucho said, if God asked me to go to the UK, so I don't really need papers. I don't really need to put money in my bank account on all these practical things. I am just going to the, to the, to the embassy and said what I want to do. So I was in shock when the visa was rejected. I didn't consider my visa being rejected and started shouting in the middle of the embassy, I need to go to the UK. That's it, God's wheels, and suddenly a miracle happened. An immigrant officer told me, calm down, please. You know, the British are always polite, that is true. Then he just said, if your God wants you to go to the UK, I can be an obstacle to his will show me again your papers. And at the end, uh, he, he just got the visa. What I call then is the ongoing move because Lucho, okay, there were some back and forth. He just came for the UK for a short period of time to London to improve his English. And he just shared with me this uh, very interesting idea. I had one of the few moments he had doubts about 
what I am doing here in, in, in London. He was expected here in London to meet the Muslims, to learn English, but at some point he was just cleaning toilets, uh, working around the clock with no time to engage with the Muslim communities and with the no language skill to engage with them. So what is the point of being in London? He said, maybe I was wrong. Maybe God gave me a different order and I just misunderstood everything. So in this process, at the end, he said, no, this is definitely the place where funding opportunities and then move back to the UK, to, to Lima, and then um, back to uh, the UK for a short period in London with Lillian and uh, the daughter that you see in the picture. And I wanted to bring the voice of Lillian in this uh, conversation because he had, she had been also um, contributing to this research. And I asked the family, how was this initial period of time in London? And I found his, uh, her narrative very significant. She told me, um, how was that? Mm, it's hard to explain. Let me just give you an example. We saved every penny we could for days to phone my mother. She lives in Lima, Yolanda, you already know her. I just put all the coins in the telephone and said, hello mom. After several months, she said, I just heard her voice back saying hello. That was a deeply sad moment and I feel miles away from home. Why this narrative? Because Lillian has been very uh, important in Lucha Life's experience of mobility, embracing the community of faith. She is also committed working with the church, but she has the person she loves in Peru and is often a source of concern in the way she understands home. And this is an issue that also concerns Lucho, but Lucho's family is in the United States. So it's a very mobile um, family with different experience, how they connect to places. And I just wanted to bring to the picture that this is not exactly the same for the whole family, even if they shape the cause to supporting Muslim communities, supporting refugees in the places they are settled. And I put red in settlement in the way Lucho reflects about being in Manchester now for several years. How did Manchester become a home? This is a fascinating experience, uh, yes, a narrative because they were offered um, three places to choose between Birmingham, Bradford and Manchester. And in Birmingham and Bradford, the family got a church, uh, a house where to live. And in Manchester, initially, they were offered anything, but at the end, they decided Manchester was the place. Why? This is really connected with what is called a sense of place, a place where you feel that this is your place, but this is really emotional, really symbolic. And at the end, when you create this kind of connection, you can find your way. Perhaps which you can expand later on this uh, idea. So the role of the community of faith in all this process, um, new miracles. Lucho were here in with family, uh, the family were here in, 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 in Manchester. Uh, they wanted, of course, a house where to live, but they were kind of taken by surprise by the community because the community uh, collect the money to buy the house for them. We wanted to buy this house, the one the family currently lives, and we we're struggling to gather all the money we need. Our community generally collected money to support us. It was a new miracle in our life. God wanted this house to be our home in Manchester, and here we are. And then he said, Peru is our country, but the UK is our home. We are part of this community. Our life is here, I mean in Manchester. It doesn't mean that we want to live in Manchester forever. That is the reason I want to put the settlement in red. Jesus was a migrant himself and he is so inspired by the life of Jesus. And we are following God's signals. So we want to, want to root our home nowhere, anywhere, no roots. We want to serve him the best we can in the place he designated for us. But what is Lucho? and his family doing for the community. Mainly, among many other things, but I, this is a significant bit and relevant for my research, they are what they call supporting refugees to find a home. Refugees, Lucho said, had lost everything. They had no home. So as, family and a, so as a family and as a community, we want to make our home their home. Remember Cruz's ideas. 
people, the Christian, in this particular denomination, want to make the refugees and the people, the migrants, stay home. All of them are welcome to our house. Our aim is to help them to find a home. By reading and studying the Bible together, we aspire to help them to feel at home. I was invited by Lucho to the church, and I meet some of the people they are working with, meeting the members of the church. So some of them are people who fled because they were persecuted for changing their faith. So that was really significant because they were moving. When I um, talk with these um, um, participants, they told me that they were, for example, rejected by their own families because they didn't accept, they wanted to change their faith and radical groups become um, a problem and they just were expelled from their homes. Just an example of the many conversations I had with these people, narratives of refugees attending the Bible, Bible studies. A man, uh, a Kurdish man fleeing Iraq for religion persecution, arrived in 2015, and he mentioned something like home was no longer a safe place to live, treated by his own family, sorry by the spelling, his own family, and a radical group. So, he, at the end, after a difficult journey, he just arrived to Manchester and engaged with the church. And the day I met him was in 2018. He was doing biblical studies in the church. And I asked, why you come here? What are you doing here? What is this significant for you? And he said something like, Lucho has become a father, the member of the church, the brothers, and the church at home. I say, oh, maybe Cruz is right. And then in 2019, I was just walking around Manchester. I met him by chance and he was already baptized and converted to Christianity. So I say, oh, tell me about that. How was that process? You were reading biblical studies and now you are converted. That is a very significant moment in people's life. And so when this man will be at home is the question. And I need to try to find again him in perhaps in the church or again in the streets and to try to explore more about this. I just want to bring this piece because I believe it's a very contested ground and I am not going to explore in detail, but wanted to, to, to put this into the picture. But teams, if the conversion into a different religion primarily driven by people's faith or the adverse circumstances migrants and refugees often encounter in their new places of settlement to make a home. If you have plenty of options, maybe you have time to think about it, you want to know to change your faith or to be baptized, but if you are under pressure to apply for asylum, it could be something different. I am not saying this is the case, I just meet these people and they were so engaged with the church. But I am just raising this because it could be a significant topic for further research, if not many people maybe had done already that. And thank you, Paolo, for this comment. I was trying to connect this idea with uh, Professor Gazan Hash, uh, idea of domestication by the nation. So at some point, immigrants, migrants, refugees, or people are just, if you want to be here, in the UK, you need to behave like this, this, and this. So to one extent, communities of faith and particular religious denomination are doing kind of the same thing. So this is also a question. Conclusion and conceptual implications. First of all, going back to the two research questions, what and where is home for those who are moved by the hand of God? In red, Home is mainly a spiritual space. I have learned that from Lucha Life's experience and connect this with Christensen and my young war in 2019. Home is experience on the move. Home, and it, this is Lucha's war. Home is a journey. Home is a journey with God. If you travel with God and family, you don't need to be concerned about home. How does mobility drive once people face complicate the home mobility nexus? Mundane mobilities matter. The movement from the wealthy family to the and the wealthy house to the chanty town really changed people, uh, Lucho's life experience and his understanding of the world and his understanding of home. Home and faith travel together. They both are largely mobile. 
they can be aired out in the migrant's invisible baggage. And that is what I see in the life experience of Lucho. He has been traveling with his faith initially internally in Peru and then moving to the UK. And this can be performed in the public or private realms. I am not saying that all people can perform their rituals and religion in private or public space. There are many difficulties of doing so. And we had seen, for example, what is happening now in, in the countries of Palestine and Israel. So I, we can take that for granted. But in the way I have engaged with, with the li this life experience and in the people, I have seen this in the context of Manchester. Conceptual implications of this piece of research. Lucho life history question blur distinction between different forms of nobility. What Lucho, who, when he was just a child and making the decision of moving to a chanty town, forced or compulsory, a force, force or voluntary. That, what is that? And more perhaps critical for the aims of this paper. What happened with the people who move by the hand of God? They are forced migrants or they are voluntary migrants because they are doing something that they have been ordered as far they understand the world and they engage with the communities of faith that expect something from them. Lucho had received this family, the house for him and his family, but the community of faith, of course, is expecting something to support the community. So the choice and compulsion um, uh, are just becoming complicated in these kind of things. Uh, Lucho's life history question also taking for granted assumptions about home. He had challenged the idea that to be attached to a place called home is a fundamental human need and a never ending search. He said that he met God and since then he feels at home. First journey has been framed as a movement in the search for home, but besides all of them, he is really uh, at some point supporting us and has idea that we need to context, to question this um, assumption that home is the foremost desire people pursue in daily life. More conceptual implications. Lucho had not been necessarily searching for home. He said he has already found home since his first encounter with God. And since then he had been experiencing home as a journey with God. By mobilizing his faith, Lucho is not seeking a place to create roots. Instead, instead he is searching for roots to propagate the moral values of his community of faith. So, Rather than being fixed in a building or a country or in any particular place, home for Lucho has become a journey. Uh, uh, yes, it, it's experienced largely on the move. More conceptual implications. The question of return. Is Lucho planning to return to Peru? Is Lilian planning to return to Peru? It could be two different answers. But for Lucho, only God knows. In my hair, he said, I know that I no longer need to be concerned about home. As far as I stay with my family, home could be any person who is willing to listen to God's voice. The point is that to find that person is difficult. On average, the church is knocking 348 doors before a person accepting the invitation to hear God's voices. So that is really interesting. And asking him, are you going to go back to Peru? He just put this, uh, and I found this beautiful, so I wanted to, to, to include in my presentation. I am like a fish. I was in Peru and felt like swimming in a pond only with people from your same culture, speaking your own language. Then I saw a hole and experienced fear. However, I crossed it and started swimming in a river. Once in the river, I discovered new animals, that I found more fascinating. And then I arrive at the ocean. I feel like swimming in the ocean in Manchester because I see so many colors and so many animals that I didn't know while swimming in the pond. In Manchester, I interact with people from different cultures, faiths, and communicate to, in different language. Going back to Peru, 
could be like moving from the ocean to the pond. So I really love the ways, and in Spanish sound beautiful. And so <laughs> it, it was really fascinating. I even remember the, the, the place we were collecting or doing this interview, very final toes. More conceptual implications, the very question of home. I am not saying that home can be just easily experienced of the move. There is, of course, ambivalence in the ways people uh, moved by the hand of God or by communities of faith experience home. And this is significant in the life experience of Lucho. How we can explain, for example, that a person who sees home as a spiritual space, as a journey with God, is so, so concerned about supporting refugees to make Manchester their home. How can you explain this tension? Is home for the religious minister uh, and for those refugees flying words something different or is the same thing? So at the end, and I just wanted to close this to please Paolo Bocagni, where are we at home? Agnes Heller, 1995. Thank you very much indeed. And um, yeah, Lucho, uh, please feel free to say whatever you want to say, to question everything. And we both will be more than happy to address comments and questions. The stop chair, yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much, Luis, and the University of Trento to do this. Um, I am also very happy to see familiar faces. And I want to say a few things. One, that um, for three years, we were talking with Luis, and I feel fascinated to see my words <laughs> in the PowerPoint because he was uh, recording and writing a lot. Um, I am aware that Luis also meet Paul that is here with us. He is the international director of Latin Link. And he was one of the persons or, or people that was in my mind about our journey from Peru to UK. Why? Because in the journey and in the calling, we Christians call calling, calling and purpose of life, a, a institution called Latin Link. Um, they were the facilitators for us to come to the UK. So, um, we are very thankful to, uh, to Latin Link that also I mentioned in, in some of the conversations that they were uh, not a visa or, or the aeroplane, but they were the people that were supporting us. And through Latin Link, we met uh, people that are already here. You know, it's uh, Christine, Jonathan, Cherry. Um, I saw. Yeah, I, I saw, I saw uh, Mary as well that is not here, uh, but uh, uh, and Judy from, from Peru. But the people here, they were also uh, hosting us. They were doing the welcome to us and they were enough patient. So I remember Cherry came to Old Trafford when we were, and Joyce were only uh, four or five months. So this is, this is the quality of people that we have at the moment. So I call home a place, yeah, it's difficult. Uh, you could see my contradictions and how I, I, I am very emotional as well. Um, what, what I would like to, to say as well is, um, is that when, when God calling, calling us to leave everything, it wasn't easy. Uh, we are coming from Peru. Um, we like many things that we don't find here. So our main, main goal is for other people to find their home in the UK. That is why we are working with refugees and asylum seekers. At the moment, we are working in a church that is um, mainly only for Chinese people. And they want to encounter their own people in Mandarin and Cantonese. But since two years ago, 
they invite us just to open, to help to open the doors for the international community. And it's a beauty to see uh, people from Iraq, Iran, people from Kurdistan, people from Middle East coming to the Chinese church here in Manchester. It's a delight, but also it's a chaos. So Chinese people doesn't know what to do with them or how to, how to engage them or how to help them. Something beautiful from the Chinese church as well was um, that, they, that they start to provide stuff for the people with, uh, with no resources. And I was very touched about that. So bedding stuff, mattresses, some money, uh, materials for food, helping with the solicitors, helping with uh, some cases. So even the Chinese people cannot speak the same language, but they have the heart. And this is that I found also with the British here. So um, for me, as an example, what, what, is, uh, what happened with even the state church that is in Mall is one of the churches that was with us from the beginning. They, they support people like me here, but also they support people in Peru and in other places. What I try to say is the love. The love here, so some, sometimes people thinking British don't have heart. British are too cold. But they, they have. And when they love, they love without barriers. And we can, we can feel that for many years. So without family here, without supporting, without things, they were the first to knock our door. Also, they, they were the first to give him money uh, to buy this house. It's, it's many, many things that I can say thank you to the British because they helped me to understand the culture here. But also, uh, thanks to God because, and, um, and this is very funny because I, I am aware that Luis and the University of Trento and other scholars are not Christians, but I am thankful to give me the space to talk and give me the space to giving a testimony of a religious person to talk about what is going on in his life and the life of his family living in another country. So, um, yeah, questions? <laughs> 